What's up, people? This is JJ, your hip hop aficionado, your hip hop connoisseur. I'm here to tell you about my show, The History of Hip Hop with JJ. It's on a Friday, 10 p.m. till 12 a.m. So whether you're into that hard body stink face style, or whether you like it more smooth and laid back, I will be bringing you the best of hip hop from the last 50 years. So join me Fridays, 10 p.m. till 12 a.m. on Black Culture Radio. Peace out. Yo, this is Sean Lynx, and you tapping in to the history of hip hop with JJ on Black Culture Radio. What's good? Check it out. We are in the house once again. Another dope MC on the line. I am speaking to the man, Sean Lynx. How you doing, bro? What's good? What's good? How you doing? Yeah, I'm cool, man. <laughs> Thank you for this, man. I'm appreciative. I am yeah, appreciative. Good, good. I so, too. how you living, bro? You busy or you chilling at the minute? Uh, right now I'm chilling at the moment, but you know I stay working. I'm, st- I'm I stay busy, so you know, stay cooking up something. Mm-hmm. That's what I like to hear, man. So, um, yeah. how was your 2023 generally, life wise, career wise? How did it go for you? It was good, you know. Um, uh, making my rounds, you know what I'm saying. Dropping, you know, dope shit, and mm. you know, staying consistent, you know, with uh, you know, I've been focusing on, you know, getting my visuals together, and you know what I'm saying. Uh, learning more about, you know, uh, mastering my craft of how I want my vision, mm-hmm. you know, expressed. Or should I say put out there, you know what I'm saying, for the world to see me. So that's what I've been focusing on lately. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, basically 2023 was dope, man. I dropped the Iceman, um, me and Machacha, and then I dropped a, um, a production album, me and Grill Noy. I produced that whole project. Mm-hmm. And I think you know, that year was pretty dope for hip hop, man. We dropped the classic. Um, my uh, Iceman album was definitely uh, something different. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the game, um, it's definitely well rounded as far as you know, uh, lyrics and you know what I'm saying, uh, rhyming different ways and you know what I'm saying, just exploring and you know, uh, challenging my pen. So you know, yeah, definitely, man. It's um, everything is good, man. In 2024, it's looking the same, man. Everything is, you know, what I'm saying we're going up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the way it goes, man. So, um. I want to get back to the essence. I want to get back to the beginning. Where did um, mm-hmm. hip hop start for you? I read somewhere that it kind of started around um, the Wu Tang era. But um, let me hear in yeah. your words, like how you found it. Were you introduced to it? Did you find it by yourself? Um, you know, yeah, just yeah. just how you got started listening as a fan. Yeah, I um, I definitely um. I'm from North Carolina, so um, I see, I grew up watching a lot of videos and, uh, you know, seeing, like, you know, uh, dope artists like Outkast and um, uh, I would say a uh, couple of others, but basically, like, with the Wu, I, my homie had the uh, Wu-Tang album, the 36 Chambers album, mm-hmm. and um, I, would, I would borrow tapes from him sometimes. So, mm-hmm. you know, I was looking through his tapes, and then I saw that case and that yeah. cover. So I was just like, yo, what's this? He was like, you don't know about the whoop? I was like, no, nah, I, ain't, I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't checked them out yet. So he, he, he let me borrow the tape and he had to come get the tape. Because I was so hooked on, you know, he was like, man, I need my 36 Chambers back. I was like, man, come on, man, I'm still listening to it. But anyway, I definitely got hipped on to the woo man back when I was like 15, 16, you know what I'm saying? Maybe early, maybe like 14 probably. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Depend on, you know, when they drop when they drop that year. But um yeah, as soon before. as they drop, man, I got hit with that. And um, you know, a lot of my homies was rapping and stuff like that. I just was enjoying the music at that time. Mm-hmm. I wasn't rapping or nothing like that. But once I got into rapping and, you know, just, you know, embracing the music of the nineties and, you know, listening to uh people like the Wu and Red Man and, you know, um 
Mob Deep, all these guys like changing the game and revolutionizing the game, should I say? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. they just made everything easy for me. Should I, I? I mean, I could say, like, they made everything easy for me as, like, seeing how they do it mm-hmm. and how they came with their own styles. And they, I would say, they laid out the blueprint. Mm. of how I wanted to do my own thing. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And how I learned this hip-hop uh, uh, this hip hop thing and, you know, rapping and love having the love for hearing beats and dope beats and all of this stuff. So basically, my era really kind of molded me to be who I am today as far as beats, um, rapping, and, you know, things like that. So I definitely grew... grew a uh, uh, strong love for this hip hop shit early, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm from the era, I'm from the eight, I'm an '80s baby, so definitely got hit real quick to the golden era. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know what you mean about <laughs> having to come get your tape. I remember I used to work with this guy, and I lent him my, um, I lent him my "It Was Written" album, and um, yeah, I used to Ooh, work with yeah. him, and he was like proper into hip hop. So I said, "You got to listen to this, man." Gave him my "It yeah. Was Written." And then I came in the week after and he'd left the company. <laughs> he took my CD with him. <laughs> so I had, to, I had to go buy it again, man. I was angry, but man, that album's yeah. worth it. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> but I know what you mean, yeah, man. Yeah. Okay, so um, outside of hip hop, what kind of music did you grow up with, you know, from family and older siblings, if you got any and stuff like that? And does that have any... Um, impact on your creativity um no nah, not really um mm. I, I, my mother and them used to play a lot of r&b and stuff like that mm-hmm. but i you know i like r&b but you know none of that haven't had a, a effect on my music or nothing like that mm. but um yeah man it's just basically been you know hip-hop and you know no no other genres it's just been the love of hip-hop man watching videos and Rap City and video vibrations and all of this stuff. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. And um, when you when you started writing for yourself, were you just um, writing to get your feelings down on paper or were you yeah. writing raps specifically? I know you said uh, you had some friends that were rapping. Um, yeah, are you yeah. talking rapping in the studio and you were joining them or are you talking just banging on lunch tables just, yeah yeah just um you know um we would go to my homie house and um you know we'd be chilling and um they'll put on a little instrumental mm-hmm. and they would be writing and just you know just writing raps and you know because they knew how to do it at that time mm-hmm. so I, I didn't i just you know would be chilling around and you know what i'm saying and um they would be right writing and stuff so one day they just was like yo you know what i'm saying why, why don't you try to write something mm-hmm. so when when did it my first rap there was just like oh shit like yo you <laughs> you you don't you good like they knew what that i had you know structure you know what i'm saying how i put my words together it was something there with some potential there yeah. so they was like yo let's let's do this you know what i'm saying let's keep writing and stuff like that so we just never stopped you know growing up you know what i'm saying smoking a little weed here and there and stuff like mm-hmm. that 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 got us, you know, into that zone of, you know what I'm saying, wanting to write more and stuff like that. So as I kept writing, I got mm-hmm. better, you know. So then I would pre- I would write on my own, like in my own, in my crib, uh, and I would present things to them, and, and they'd be like, whoa, you know what I'm saying? So I just got better at it, and then I just never stopped, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So as I, you know, made my rounds and, you know, go. I got family in New York, so I go. I go to New York in the summer and stuff like that, and come back home. Like always, you know, try to run into people and present my raps and stuff like that. I used to have like have like nine, ten raps just in my head, ready to just you know rap anywhere. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I used to do that. Like I used to meet up with anybody who could rap and stuff like that, and just have like mad rhymes ready to go, man. So. Yeah, ever since then, with the homies, man, rapping back in the day, we always, you know, just never stopped, man. Mm, cool, cool. And was there a um, was there a tipping point where it's like, this is what I want to do for a living, or was it just a natural progression from what you were just talking about? I I, w- I would say um both, man, because like. 
like me doing it naturally and learning, knowing that I was good at it, I really came to a realization like, yo, I can do this, you know, professionally. And, and as much as people, you know, would tell me like, yo, you should be on and you should, you should be here. You should be it. I knew that a lot of people was gravitating towards my lyrics and loving how I do my shit. And it was just like, yo, you should, you know, you should really, you know what I'm saying? Take it serious and do it. But I already was thinking to myself, like, yo, how dope I am. I'm, I'm, I am serious about it. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I just will always do my thing. And, you know, I just ain't never stopped, man. Okay. And, and I feel like at that point, when I came to the realization, I just was like, yeah, I'm, I'm nice. I'm, I'm about to kill dudes. I'm about to come through and do my shit. They going to know me. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, yeah. 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 All right, man. So, um getting back to you specifically um the sean links the name how did how did you come up with that is that just the extension of you or is there a story behind it or anything like that yeah um my, one of my homies gave me that gave me that name like um like like i said back in the day growing up listening to the 90s era mm. you know what i'm saying we love boot camp we love help the skelter we love um uh, Terror Squad and Big Pun, all these guys. So, you know, we were just listening listen to, like, certain names and names that sound hard and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So, you know, they had, like, Cuban Links mm-hmm. uh, from Terror Squad. And then, you know what I'm saying, my uh, uh, my homie, um, you know, we love Hell the Skelter. You know, we got Sean Price, mm-hmm. one, of the, one of my favorite MCs of all oh, yeah. time. And um, so my, my real name is Sean. Mm-hmm. So, um... He kind of put it together and was like, "Yo, you Sean Lynx. Mm. you know what I'm saying?" So it kind of, I, I was 16, so you know, I, I was like, "Yeah, yeah, it sounds hard, but it didn't have no meaning behind it." Yeah. So as you know, as the years you know go by, you know, I always try to figure out a meaning for it, or you know what I'm saying, what could it mean? Could I, you know, um, make the letters stand for something? So I didn't want to be too dramatic with it. Hmm. And it was hard to think of something, so I just left it. It don't have no meaning. It's just, you know, it just sound dope. Sean yeah, Links, yeah. you yeah. know what I'm saying? Cuban Links, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm, I get you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it kind of, you know, I always say kind of put the names together, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, and just, you know, made my own. Okay, so I want to get on to, um, I want to get on to Mad Max, because obviously when I, um, you know, when I put up that video of, of Wally era, that's, obviously off the Mad Max uh, project. Um, yeah, definitely. First of all, shout out to Holy Smokes, man. Those beats are fire. Absolute fire. Yeah, shout Penny, out to Pennywise, Smokes, man. Radioactive, Rawhide, Wally Era, of yeah. course. I, I, I love that yeah, album, man. Yeah, yeah. I saw the video and I thought, I've got to go and investigate. So then I went and, you know what I mean, bought the album, listened to that and just love yeah, it, man. That's how I got into you guys. You. So, um, yeah, man, how did... That, that... The album is a masterpiece, man. That's that's one of my favorite albums. Yeah, man. <clears throat> Believe me, I've 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 played the hell out of that album. <laughs> um, how did you and Holy Smokes connect? Um, I got with Holy Smokes. Um, I seen him on the gram. Um, you know, he followed me. I followed him. Um, and you know, I saw that he was dope with the beats, man. Mm-hmm. And um. You know, anytime I hear a dope beat, you know, I, I don't just have to make it. You know, other people make beats. I got projects, you know, produced by other people. Mm-hmm. I'm producing my own album right now that I'm working on as well. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I still got a lot in the works. I've worked with other people. But when I got with Holy Smokes and saw what he was doing, I was like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Let's It's time to get one in. And he was like, yo, I never thought you asked. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So once, once that happened, he sent me... Uh, he sent me a few beats and um, I sent them back. Uh, the first one I did was Rawhide. Mm-hmm. So that right there was solidified like, yo, you know what? Yeah, we got to do a full joint because if mm-hmm. they're going to be coming out like this, mm-hmm. then, you know, we got to keep it moving. So, you know, once we started, um, you know, cooking it up, man, it all came together. And I just felt like, and at that point in time, like, you know, um, I, na- I like to name my albums after characters. Because I'm a movie, I'm a movie guy, so I like movies and you know throwback movies and stuff like that. And um, I like to name my albums that kind of relate to like the characters. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So at that point in time, on me coming in the in the game in this underground, I felt like at that point in time, I'm I'm in my Mad Max zone. Mm-hmm. 
I'm in my, I'm staying in my own lane. I'm, I'm killing shit. I'm reckless. You know what I'm saying? I'm letting them know I'm coming through on my road rage. You know what I'm saying? I'm a mm-hmm. on me. So at that point in time, I felt like Mad Max would match that. And plus the beats he was sending me gave me that vibe that, mm-hmm. that, uh, that post, I would say that, that post-apocalyptic type. Post-apocalyptic. Yeah. Yeah. I was just about to say that, <laughs> that post-apocalyptic type yeah. vibe. You know what I'm saying? That destroyed earth type vibe. So I was mm. like, yo, you know what? This sounds real like you know, you know, we about to run over shit. Mm. So, you know, I, I always felt like, yo, this that's one of my favorite albums, man. Like, okay. if not, that's that's my favorite. So was that um was that during the creation of the album or was it like this is Mad Max, let's go from there? Or was it like you got nah, a few nah, beats like, and then Mad Max I came? Did, yeah, yeah, I did a couple of songs, mm-hmm. and I went off the vibe of the songs, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And the vibe of the songs and how I was feeling, like I said, at that time, I just felt like, yo, you know, I'm learning a lot of stuff about the, you know, the underground and, you know what I'm saying, how to move, and, you know what I'm saying, basically, you know, I came in this shit by myself, so, you know, I just mm-hmm. felt like, you know, I'm holding this shit down, one man on me by myself, so, mm-hmm. um, I just felt like the album gave me that feel of, a Mad Max feeling, you know what I'm saying? It's real, uh, like a like a gory cinematic type vibe, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So I felt like it, it it hit perfect. Out of all my albums, I just felt like I hit the dot right there in the middle mm-hmm. for that Mad Max joint. So yeah, yeah. Um, and and the process you... of making it was it was fun, man. Like mm. we was banging them out. Mm-hmm. I think we we worked maybe like a, a it was took like a year maybe. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Probably less than that. We just, you know, the time and I had other albums I was putting out and stuff. So, but yeah, like with that album, we got it done like that, man. Yeah. Like it where flowed. Is, you know, our chemistry just flowed so ill. Hmm. Where's Where's Holy Smokes from? I, I forgot to look that up, to be honest. Where is he situated? He's from, he from Baltimore. Oh, okay. All right. Cool, 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 yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. I've spoken yep. to a couple of um, rappers from there. Um, East Shore Ridge yeah. and uh, P. Shells, man. Baltimore's got a good scene yeah, down man. there, man, from what I can tell. that Well, up there, I should yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. They've got a good scene from what yeah, I can tell. Yeah. Um, do you have um, an opinion on... Because uh, when I purchased Mad Max, I got it off Bandcamp. And then after I listened to that and I saw that was dope, I went and got the missing links as well um, with um, Va- uh, Vargo. I can't remember his Vargo. name. Off my yeah, Vargo, yeah. Um, do you have an opinion on doing an album with one producer or just, you know what I mean, one or two producers or, you know, like yeah. some, because when you're, when you're thinking about some of those golden era albums that you were talking about, you know, there'd be a track by Primo, there'd be a track by you know, Pete Rock to be a trap by, you know right. what I mean? Do you yeah. do you have an opinion on whether to do it that way or whether just to work with one producer and have a clear vision for the album? I think um, if, it, if it works, you know, if it works for, you know, whoever doing the music, if, if it works and you can get, you know, those type of producers to all, you know, everything can fit sonically, then cool, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But for me... I like working with one producer because mm-hmm. I feel like with his sound, with, it, with with his sound and my lyrics, I feel like the chemistry it, we can create something uh, sonically. You know yeah, what I'm saying? A whole, Where it a whole project co- it be cohesive and it all comes together, mm-hmm. and you know, not, nothing to be you know out of whack coming from left field. Like this guy might make beats different from this guy. Yeah, this yeah. guy make beats different from this guy. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So if you got a gumbo of different producers, mm-hmm. then you know you're gonna get different feelings of the album. Mm-hmm. But if you nice and you got one producer, you can still give them different feelings of the album mm-hmm. when you you know when you challenge your pen and you you know what I'm saying you tapping into those different worlds of what the what the music makes you you know bring mm-hmm. forth. You know what I'm saying? So I yeah. feel like if you got a good producer. And he's sending you different things to where it can sound like it's a different producer. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because it's different samples, it's different drums and all of this stuff. So if you challenge in your pen, you can make things different and, you know, make it all come together. You know what I'm saying? But 
to each his own. You know what I'm saying? Who mm-hmm. whoever feel like they need this many producer, that many producers, that's cool if you can make it work. But I'm a fan of one producer, mm-hmm. one artist. All right, cool. That's cool, man. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Like you said, you're from uh, North Carolina. Um, what's the scene like there? I mean, obviously, there's you know some big stars that come from that area um, in the hip hop right. game. Um, right. Have they changed the scene, or is it more or less the same as it's always been? Have you noticed the? Um, uh, I'm I'm just really uh like you know stepping out. Mm. And from what I see, um, it's kind of it's kind of like a mixture, you know. It's you know it's like North Carolina. It's a lot of different type of artists out there. It's mm-hmm. you know it's trap artists. You know you can bump into some you know um, some real spitters. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people cut, like you know they come from they move from different places and move here, and you just might bump into somebody who can you know do the same thing you do. Mm-hmm. But the scene out here is it's kind of like the hip hop scene, it's a hip hop scene out here, but sometimes you just gotta find it. Or sometimes you gotta, you know, wait till something comes around. But it's around. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But you just gotta be in the loop, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I, I try to reach out to people, but, you know, you know how I go. You know what I'm saying? I guess people be busy or, you know, they have things already booked or something like that. But the scene is cool out here, but it's mm-hmm. not like a New York or. You know what I'm saying? Where the where the underground scene is more, you know, alive, I would say. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But, okay. You know, There's different types of music out here. Like I like at a show, you know, you might see, you know, a lot of trap people, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying, come up and do like you know, club type songs. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I might be the one person who come and does some nineties sound and shit. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, it's it's different, you know. Hmm. Um, and do you, um, I mean, is there any like NC artists that you've, uh, come across that you might get the opportunity to work with or is it kind of like everyone's doing their own thing down there? Uh, maybe if if I reach out, maybe I could, maybe, you know, I probably could work with a couple, uh, dudes, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, uh, right now, uh. As far as you know, any NC artists you know that out, I, I work with. I work with Grio Noe, uh, and not too many others. You know what I'm saying? Because like yeah. like you said, a lot of people doing their own thing and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But yeah, maybe if I reach out and you know get with some cats, you know what I'm saying? We probably can um you know get together and do something. Yeah, shout we'll out Grio Noe, man. He's dope. I've listened to a couple of these tunes, man. I I like what he's doing. Yeah. Man. I like that. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, and he and he young man, like mm. a young cat like that, man, spitting like that. That's mm. man. Imagine him in a couple more years. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like he, why when I when I seen what he do, and you know he reached out and you know what I'm saying he wanted to do some work. I, I when I seen, I was already down. Like yo, word, like cause I I know he could rap. Like he really raps. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's yeah. not a lot, not a lot of cats out there like who like really rap. A lot mm. of people have like they. A lot of people are I would I call them content rappers mm-hmm. because their raps are be basically about one thing. You yeah. know, they had a struggle or you know what I'm saying, they you know, they do the drug, the plug talk they call it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's it's your those type of rappers who can rap mm-hmm. and then it's you know a lot of people, you know, they have their own content of what they rap about. But when it comes to like myself or Grill Noy and people like who can really like rap and be universal and just give you bars overall, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And throw a little bit of everything in there, you know what I mean? Because and it's not like every time you hear one of my songs, it's just about my struggle in life I had or mm-hmm. how many things I could flip. You know what I'm saying? It's like a I MC, I get busy, I'm nicer than you type vibe. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Or or I get busy. Whatever, you know what I'm saying? It's just an overall gumbo of just bars, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And, and it could it have some drug talk in it and a little bit of this in it, but not too much. And my and, yeah. and, and, and as far as what I see, we we don't talk about stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And if we do, it might be metaphorically, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. With, with the lyric. Just trying to, just trying to make it a <laughs> yeah, bit man, more like, well Yeah, yeah, everybody has yeah. their own thing, do their own thing, but... 
I like MCs, you know what I'm saying? MCs who really get busy on the mic. And not to say those other cats don't get busy on the mic. You know, it's just, you know, there's their content and what they talk about, you know, I don't I don't really you know what I mean? Yeah. So I mean for me personally, yeah. I think that um, you know, we're talking about Grey or Noy, you um I think you can tell when a rapper is well versed in the game, do you know what I mean? It's kinda like been a student of the game. Do you know what I right. mean? And um, like you say, you know, there's a variety of topics. It's a well-rounded uh, rapper. Right. Do you know what I mean? They they can rap on any subject like straight away, right. just like that. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. Instead of you know, talk about plug, or well, talk about yeah. you know what I mean? Going to a party or something. Oh, am I going right. to the party exactly. to be a plug? Or you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's exactly. I think it's um, yeah. exactly. you can always tell. I think the people that have got a sort of well-rounded um, view of the game right. and can hit any topic, man. So I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah. Um. Getting uh, staying on that topic, um, the way you approach your music, um, do you sort of lean towards um, sort of having a rhyme book and then you'll hear beats and tailor your rhyme book to that beat, or do you hear beats and think that beat's dope? I'm gonna write something specifically for that beat. Do you understand what I'm saying? So does the yeah, do the words yeah. come before the beat, or does the beat come before the words normally? Right. I know I do, you could probably do, do it both ways, but right, yeah, I do, I do both, mm. I do both, but most of the time, um, if it's something real, because I keep I keep some verses in the in the cut, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So if I if I have something, I hear some 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 dope beats and you know somebody send me something and i might be like oh this verse could fit with this Mm -hmm. then i'll let it fly Mm -hmm. but most of the time i'll write something you know what i'm saying the feeling Mm -hmm. depending on how i'm feeling i don't never write if i ain't like in the mood to write so every time i give every time i get on the mic and and do my and do my shit Mm -hmm. it's always a hundred percent of me feeling it Mm -hmm. to do it that's why i don't i feel like i don't miss because I don't never push myself to write, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So, you know, every time I do it, it's because I was in the mood to do it. Mm-hmm. So that's why I keep my shit at 100%, man. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I, I might write, I might throw something, or I might sit there and write something new. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, that's cool, man. And I know you said you um, you like to make music as well. Is there ever, is there any other avenues that you go down, either musically or outside of music, outside of hip hop that you um, like to engage in or is it just sort of, you know, writing and producing? Uh, I, I like, um, I like fashion and I like, I like clothes, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I like, I like getting fly. So, you know, I'm working on a, a clothing line as well. Mm-hmm. So outside of music, yeah, I want to do, you know, I want people wearing my wearing my shit. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. that's what I'm doing right now. I'm, I'm in the you know process of getting that everything you know uh, trademarked and copywritten and stuff like that. So when I do bring it out, I don't want nobody to try to steal it or nothing. So I'm mm-hmm. just trying to go. I usually, would just if I put something on a shirt or something, I just wear it. But I'm just trying to being I I have my label, and I want to be more official about things now you know what i'm saying because you know like i want to buy product from me and stuff like that i have my website so it's just me wanting to be more official and having a boss mind about things and not just putting things out there i'm just being more strategic about things now Mm so um i definitely want to uh you know bring my bring my clothing line and get that off the ground and Mm -hmm. you know start wearing myself people see how i freak it you know what i'm saying because like i said i like to get flying and wear fresh kicks and shit like that so people see how i freak it then they might be, yo let me get a shirt let me get a hoodie and once i get those DMs, then i'll do a shirt run i'll do a hoodie run or you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. shirt with the short set for the summer coming up you know what i'm saying so i i really like that that's that's the other side you know what i'm saying like that's something that I used to say when I was young. Like I wanted to design clothes. You know what I'm mm. saying? I wanted to be a designer. That was okay. before rapping. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's that's another um that's another one of my passions, man. Oh, that's clothes. cool, man. 
That's really cool, man. Um, so I know you were talking earlier about um, projects coming up. Why don't you um, let us know what you got coming and what kind of time frame we're talking about? Uh, um, the time frame, uh, well, I got my Blade Brown album is coming soon. Hmm. Um, I'm getting everything ready for that right now as we speak. Um, I want uh, the time frame for that, man, I probably would say at least about three, maybe three more months for that. You know what hmm. I'm saying? Maybe about three more months at the, at the, at the most, you know hmm. what I'm saying? But I got a mixtape dropping real soon though. You know what I'm saying? I got a mixtape. <clears throat> um, it's 30 verses over your favorite uh beats 90s beats um uh up-to-date beats mm. um it's definitely like a dope jadakiss mixtape you know how you get mm. the mixtapes back mm. in the day you know yeah, what i'm saying yeah. the, uh the playlist is on the front of the cover mm. you know what i'm saying i did it just like that you know what i'm saying and i'm not really going like too professional you know, with the CD printing and all that, I'm doing it just like they did it yeah. in the 90s. I'm printing it everything up myself. You know what I'm saying? I got my covers. I'm putting it all in the co in the CD cases myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm burning the CD and I'm writing on them with a marker the 90s <laughs> way. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to put out a 90s official mixtape yeah. for all my fans who, you know, who love that era of, you know how sometimes if you ain't listening to an album, you just throw that throw that mixtape in or that mm. CD in mm. just listening to your favorite one of your newest artists just go 16 crazy yeah, on yeah. different beats mm. that's that's what I'm doing oh, you know what I'm saying cool, and it's man. just like the night you know what I'm saying I got a couple and I sprinkled in a couple of my favorite joints from different albums mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying but yeah it's um it's definitely fire man it's um got some dope 90s beats up there man some you know what I'm saying? I ain't going to reveal too much, but that's coming real soon. You know what I'm okay. saying? I would say in the next 30 days, maybe. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So I'm just waiting on a couple of things to get set up, and then I'm going to announce that. And you know what I'm saying? I'll keep you posted. You know what oh, I'm saying? It's going to be available. It's going to be available for you to burn on my band camp, on my website. Um, But yeah, uh, that's, that's what's happening right now. My mixtape, then Blade Brown is coming. And then I got a joint coming with uh, Raw Duke. Um, I got a joint coming with True Cypher I'm working on. I got one with Vincent Price I'm working on. Like, man, I'm I'm, I'm really booked, man. I'm, I'm busy, you know what I'm saying? So, oh, yeah, I got one coming with um, Body Bag Ben. Oh, you know, we locked in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we locked in. We, we talked, you know what I'm saying? So we're going to get something shaking soon you know after we you know we both are still a little busy but yeah we already mm -hmm. locked in we're gonna get cranking that's gonna be crazy oh, okay, so yeah. um yeah, that's gonna be bar heavy i'm snapping mm -hmm. on that that's gonna mm -hmm. I, I really got a feeling that's gonna be another mad max bolo feel type shit like i'm just gonna <laughs> go ham on those beats because yeah. his beats be crazy so yeah man I'm, I'm real busy man but for right now for 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 2024 um it's looking like uh um, my mixtape and Blade Brown for this year. I might try to squeeze in something else, but I doubt it. But 2025 is going to be lit too, though. Because everything that I'm working on at once right now mm -hmm. might all be finished by the end of the year. Yeah. And then I'm just going to be rolling them out in 2025. <laughs> Give everybody, you know, two or three albums 2025. So yeah, at least yeah. two. You know, so yeah. Cool. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to that, man. Um, yeah, uh, I forgot to ask, um, just quickly getting back to Mad Max and Wally Era, um, big shout out to Mondo Slade on that one. Um, yeah, yeah, again, another rapper that um, that I love, man. He's impressed me a lot the last couple of years. Um, how did you hook up with him? Uh, I just hit him up on the gram, you mm. know. Like, you know, a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, they, they see me get busy, you know what I'm saying, they respect, they respect the pain, you know what I'm saying, so, you know, I, I, um, you know, hooked up with a couple people, you know what I'm saying, and, you know what I'm saying, like, um, followed a couple people, people follow me back, and, um, you know, exchanged numbers with a couple dudes, you know what I'm saying, we chatted up, and, you know, get to building and talking about doing some work, so, uh, he sent me a joint to get on his album. And I told him, yo, I definitely want you to get on my album I'm working on. 
Mm. So when I was working on the song, I had the song as a one verse. <clears throat> but then I was thinking, you know, I need, I wanted to get another feature on the album. And then I was thinking, yo, who would sound good on this? So I see, I see how Mondo, you know, he, he from the same era. He from, you know, he rocked the Wileys, you know what I'm saying? We, we love the woo shit, you know? Mm. So I was like, all right, we'll get Mondo on it and we'll, you know, come together and, throw out Wally's on and you know what I'm saying? I had the whole idea, everything like, yo, let's do a video, we're gonna rock out Wally's, we're gonna do this, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I shot the um I shot the uh, Atlanta and we went out there and you know, we met up and you know what I mean? He, he brought his, his video got through and we shot it, man. Yeah. And um the rest is history, man. Like we dropped that shit, fire ass video, um the album went crazy. And then to have the dope videos to follow it, you know mm. what I'm saying? Just put the icing on the cake, man. Yeah, I mean, it's, and it's... when I choose, like, and when I choose my features, man, I, I I do that. I don't just I don't just fuck with people, you know what I'm saying? Just because mm. they got a big name, I fuck with people if they just, if they really dope, mm. you know what I'm saying? So I like to make sure that the people that I put on my albums fit, you know what I'm mm. saying? They fit the song. Because mm -hmm. your name, big. I don't give a fuck about your name, big. I give a fuck about us making this song dope. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, yeah, we we yeah. We, we came through. We made some fire. Yeah, like, you know, like I said, obviously, you know, I put that um, Wally era video on the gram, and you um, reacted to that, which is why I thought I might as well. You know what I mean? Get in touch and see if you're up for an interview. Like I said, yeah, I appreciate man. it, man. I'm glad you so, reached yeah. out, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, yeah, that, like I said, that, that Mad Max is dope. So, um, why don't you let people know, um, how they can get in touch with you, your socials, your websites, all of that stuff. Uh, so people can go right. and check, check out Sean links. Yeah. If you, if you want to, uh, you know, get hit new music, um, my gram hit, hit me up on Instagram. It's Sean links official S E A N official. No S E A N links official um my my uh website is loungeboymusic.com uh my band camp sean links you know just you know tap in with me on mm -hmm. my youtube sean links mm -hmm. yeah, yeah man all right man yeah it has been a pleasure like i said i appreciate you um hitting me back and doing this for me man i appreciate it I've said it before yeah. to a few people that I've interviewed. I don't just, you know, like you were saying about your features, I don't just contact anybody. If you if I'm not feeling your music, I'm not getting in touch. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I got in touch because, you know, Wally Era, like I said, um, you know, uh, Rawhide, Pennywise, yeah. you know what I mean? That Mad Max it. joint is dope. So yeah. everyone should go check that out. Um, the missing links with uh, Vargo is dope. Check that out, man. Like you said, go to Radio the Raheem. Time. I got the yeah. Radio Raheem, mm. Bolo Young, mm. Iceman. Mm. Yeah. yeah, still so. fly with real noise. Mm. So, yeah, plenty man. to check out, man. So, yeah, so everybody out there, make sure you go check out Sean Links, man, because he's dope. Yeah. But for now, Sean Links, Late man, thank soon. you for your time, sir. And um, yes, sir. hopefully speak to you soon, all right? Yeah, man, anytime, man. Just hit me up. Cool, man. Thank you. Your kind of music all day, all night, right on your one and only station, Black Culture Radio. Hey, what's up, people? This is JJ, your hip-hop aficionado, your hip-hop connoisseur, and you're listening to Black Culture Radio.